Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to the episode number 22 of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to optimize our database when we deal with a lot of custom fields. So uh, the situation right now, it's pretty standard. It's something like really similar to pretty much the majority of the plugins that you used and you saw around. We have a custom page where you can activate and deactivate some specific options of our plugin. All these custom fields that we created attached to our dashboard page are getting saved in the database. So let's take a look on how they actually are getting saved. If we access our database, and in my case, I'm using SQL Pro to access my local database, we open the table WP option and we scroll through all the custom options and options name that WordPress saved on installation, you will reach the point where you find uh, the list of options that we generated. And you can see the ID of the option name. It's matching all the IDs that we uh, defined in our base controller in the list of managers. These are all the ID. And you can see that because we are doing these as a Boolean, so through or false, in the WordPress database is getting saved as one or nothing, or null or zero. So basically, if this is one, it means it's checked. If this is zero, it's not checked. This is okay, and it's really easy to read and manipulate this data. But if you notice other section in the WordPress database, they have these weird data saved. And this is basically the serialized way that WordPress saves the custom data, the data inside the database for the options. This is a, a good approach for uh, like just to avoid when you have multiple options, just to avoid to bloat your database because uh, right now we have, yeah, this six, seven fields, so it's not too much, but we're gonna extend our database a lot. So we need to serialize this data. Otherwise we risk to slow down your the database up to three times slower than if we were using the serialized data. So the serialized data works in this way. Basically WordPress stores the A as stands for array, then the column and the number of data that we have in our array, the number of slots that are inside our array. So in this case, we have three. So that means that this uh, array has to be considered as three separate data. And you see that uh, the slots of data are actually six. They're not three. So every slot of data, every uh, option of the array, it's separated by a semicolon. But here we have one semicolon. So one, two, three. And then we have four, five, and six. So why it says three, even if we have six different type of data separated by semicolon? Well, WordPress organized these things if in case uh, a specific data has a specific unique option. So in our case, we have the AWPS that has the option of the location that it's inside the themes subfolder. So actually WordPress is saying to itself, to its own array that even if we have six, this should be three. So split these six options of the array in actually two. So every time we have a semicolon, just consider these two options between these two semicolon and it's one single option. And uh, inside the array, every time there's a data stored in some way, WordPress saves the type of data. In this case, it's an S, that means it's a string. And how long is this data in terms of number of characters? So four, because we have four letters. And if we check other examples here, for example, we have, uh, here we have the array with four slots, but then we have a string with five letters, and then we have another array with one single slot that it's separated by uh, curly brackets. And then here, if we have an i, that means that it's an integer, that it's equal to zero and stuff like that. So WordPress has this way of serializing all the data uh, to keep track and try to uh, not occupy too many slots, too many rows in the database if you have the same or similar type of data that can be related to one single option group. So in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to convert this stuff in just one single option field in our WP options table in order to not blow the database and um, make it faster and make it scalable for the future.
From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing. It's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use, it doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. I think I'm gonna say it. Yes, I'm gonna say it. It's the best page builder for WordPress. I said it. It's totally free for you to use it, download it, and install it on all the websites that you want. And if you really, really like it, you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all. And it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. So first we need to access our admin.php where we are defining the settings and where we're defining the fields. So let's edit those. First of all, our settings, we're creating a one single setting for every key. So we're basically causing this issue of having one single key as one single setting. And uh, we can change this just by simply copying the array, comment the for each. We don't need to loop anymore uh, through all the unique keys that we have in our managers, but we can define just one single option name and the option name just for consistency and for the way that WordPress works with the settings API should be identical to the page that we're defining in our field. So in our case, we're defining the Alicat plugin page and is the same uh, uh, main page that we're defining here that we're using as a dashboard to specify the type of option name. So by specifying this, we can tap this option name that is gonna be stored in the database here instead of custom post type manager, we're gonna have Alicat plugin. So this is the only thing that we have to do for the settings. Now, in order to change and make our field work, we need to update both callbacks for the checkbox sanitize and the callback for the checkbox field. So let's start with the callback for the checkbox field because it's better to understand, it's easier to understand, and then we will do the sanitize. So if we access our manager callbacks and we scroll down in the checkbox field, right now what we're doing, we're printing all these input checkbox field by just simply tapping the name that is actually the label for. So the ID that we're passing with the unique name and the ID that we're passing is just the usual key from our base controller. So it's custom post time manager taxonomy. And basically in our uh, generation of the HTML, we are simply generating these HTML with the same exact name of our field in the database. So if we access the inspector here, the name is CPT manager, that it's identical to what we have in the database. But this should actually be the option name that in our case is Alicad plugin, and then the CPT manager handled as an array. This is the result that we should have because we specified previously in our custom settings, the option name is Alicat plugin. So inside this Alicat plugin, we need to store everything. Inside the Alicat plugin, we need to store the CPT manager, taxonomy manager, media widget, and blah, blah, blah. And the result that we should have in our HTML printed is exactly this one. The name of the option and inside the square brackets, the name of the custom ID of our custom field. Let's do it in the HTML. So first we don't have the ability to access that option name. So we need to pass it through the array that we're having here. Inside the arguments, we know that every time we have a callback, we are passing all these arguments and we're already tapping those arguments to get the label and the class from the previous lesson. Here, let's add just another field right after. Actually, let's add it right here and we can call it option name if we want it, but you can give the uh, declaration of what you want. This list of arguments, it's completely optional. It's completely up to you what you want to write. So here I'm going to just uh, repeat the page name of the plugin. So now that we have access to the option name, what we can do, we can say that the checkbox is getting actually the option, but not by the name, but by the arguments option name. So now that we have the option name that in our case is, a, is zero, we can check if the option name here, and actually let's organize it better by saying uh, declare a variable called option name, then it's going to be equal uh, to the arguments here, option name, perfect. And option name is going to be basically Alec at plugin, and then we can get the checkbox to get the actual option. So here, 
Now that we have the option name, we can say we can print dynamically the name with the option name and inside the square brackets, the actual name. Let me close the uh, sidebar to have more space. So the name is going to be the option name that in our case is Alicat plugin. And then inside the square brackets, we're going to have the actual name of the field that in our case, it's equal to the key that it's custom post type manager, taxonomy manager, and blah, blah, blah. And then the checkbox here, we cannot check anymore if the option name Alicat plugin is checked because we're not going to have this situation in the database where one field it's it's equal, uh, it's equal to one result. We're going to have a situation like that with the array. So we need to check the name that we just specify and see if the options inside the name is checked. And in all, in order to do it, we're already getting the option Alicat plugin. We need to do exactly the same. So open the square brackets and pass the name of our option and see if it actually is in the database, if it's checked just return uh, the check. Perfect. We can leave the ID and the label for with the same name because these two are not handled, are not considered by WordPress. So we're not going to create any issue. The other option that we have to change is the actual sanitization of the checkbox because before we were passing just directly the input. So we were passing the single uh, custom post type manager, taxonomy manager, and blah, blah, blah. And we were just checking if the input is checked. So was passed part of the form data we were returning through to store in the database the one, otherwise we were returning false to store zero or null or nothing in the database, how WordPress handles it. We cannot do it anymore because we're not passing a single input field, but we're passing inside the input, we're passing everything. So let's comment this out. And first we need to create the output array because we are dealing with an array of data as WordPress wants it. So we have to return the array of data. So for now, let's return an empty output. That means that all our checkboxes will be unchecked because we are returning an empty array. So everything it's not there anymore. The thing that we have to do though, we have to loop through all our managers, the unique keys that we have here, check if those are checked. So we need to do a similar check that we have here, check if that specific key is present in the form, we can return true for that specific key. Otherwise we can return false. And to do that, it's really, really simple. So let's do another for each. And inside here, as usual, let's tap our, these managers list from the base controller as you guessed it, key that contains the value. And in this for each, we need to basically redo this entire check here. But instead of checking if the input is checked is part of the HTTP post form submit. We need to check if the input inside itself has a key that it's equal to custom post time manager, taxonomy manager, and all the good stuff that we declare. If this has something return true and otherwise return false, but we need to store this data inside somewhere and we have to return this data. So we are returning the output. Perfect. Let's open the output variable and let's declare inside the output array, the same key that we're checking for the is set input field. So we're returning the full array with the full declaration of what's checked and what's not. Does it make sense? Let's save it. Let's go back in our administration page. And here we have a big error. We have an error because all these uh, CPT manager, taxonomy manager, and blah, 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 are not inside our database yet. So we're trying to access these option name that actually doesn't really exist in the database. So we have to change this a little bit because we don't want to access that uh, value in this way while we're written, we're accessing the value. We don't want to access this value. We want to actually just access the name of this and then uh, print the HTML. So without escaping this stuff. So in order to do that, we can simply cut this stuff. So let's just maintain the name and then concatenate more things. So let's concatenate the option name again. So we're going to basically print what we're passing Alicat plugin and then concatenate this with the square brackets wrapping around the name that whatever name is going to get printed. So this is the full thing that we're going to get. And it's going to be basically Alicat plugin, square brackets, 
name square brackets. Let's refresh our admin page. Perfect. Now everything is unchecked because we don't have any more. We're not matching anymore the options that we have in your database. And if we access our source code and we tap one of these things, look at that. The name is actually Alicat plugin, what we're passing from our field, and then the name of the whatever option we are matching right now. So custom post type manager, the other one is taxonomy manager, and so on. That's perfect. So let's check the database. Let's refresh. We don't have anything for now. We still have the old options here, custom post type manager, chat manager, and blah, blah, blah. But now if we save a bunch of things, so one, uh, two, and three, and we save the changes, the settings are getting saved. The page gets refreshed. If we tap or refresh the page, our settings are saved. But if we access the database and we refresh, the list of database, look what we have here as the latest generated custom field or options field. We have the Alicat plugin that is the same name that we're declaring it as our option field in the set settings. And then inside here, we have the full list of array of all our options. We have custom post type manager that has a boolean of one, taxonomy manager that is not checked, so has a boolean of zero, and so on for all the single options. And this is way better than having one single option per field or one field per option that it bloats a little bit the database. So now we can safely delete this stuff and it's going to be perfect. And then we can safely delete this return that we commented out. That's perfect. And let's give it a little bit of space or so more readable. Awesome. Does it make sense? I really hope so. So basically what we're doing, these are two different options to deal with the database in WordPress. One option is just to store one single field with one single option value. And if you have multiple fields having multiple values, this is good because it's really readable. It's really easy to update and easy to manage. Even manually, you can access the database and change this. And when you transfer the database from a website to another, it's so easy, it will work 100%. The second option is to serialize the data as WordPress does it. This is better because it keeps your database more organized and uh, lighter and actually performs three times faster than if you were using uh, single fields one after another. The problem with this is the database is not readable. It's not easy to update if you have to manually update something or if you have to transfer your database from a website to another is not super easy to do it. So that could create some issues. There is a third method that I'm not recommending to you, but you can use it if you want, and is to create a custom table, like in the case the tool set did when I did a review of the tool set, create a custom table. So just one generate a table for you and store the data as you want by uh, storing the data, not using serialized, but optimize the data storage the way you want it. I wouldn't recommend to create a custom table because by creating a custom table, basically then you have to take care of everything by yourself and it's really laborious and it's really, really annoying to do it. Like you're not using the built-in WordPress metadata API functions, all the things like the settings API that even if they're convoluted, WordPress takes care of sanitization, optimization, security, and all this kind of stuff. You have to do it all by yourself if you decide to create a custom uh, table. Then you have to take care of security of storing data and maintaining the data stored in a secure way. And then you have to manually implement the cache layer when the data is growing. And then you have to do all these by yourself instead of relying on the core of WordPress and uh, let WordPress take care of everything. So the third option of creating a custom table is not recommended at all. You should use one on the other based on the amount of data. In our case, we're going to have a lot of data here, so it's better serialized stuff. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.